welcome everyone to the meditation and service, the appreciation of um, the family and friends for Barbara and and the the word is simply um, Paul when he wrote to the Philippians he said that he <clears throat> was between two going going to heaven or staying here and he said he was between two but it was good for him to stay and minister and uh, and then he writes about being absent from the body and present with the Lord and face to face with the Lord. And so we call this our face to face service where we celebrate the fact that Barbara is in the presence of Christ and face to face with him and others that she knows and that have gone on before. And that's greatly comforting to us uh, because, um, you know, when a person passes, they're not in their body. They're not buried in the cemetery. They're not there. They're not in their, their body. They're gone. Hallelujah. And she's gone and in the presence of God. So we can have a word of prayer now. Father, we thank you for the this time for mourning. Um, there's there's a measure of grief, loss, and there's also rejoicing and thankfulness for our promises are sure, and they are very precious promises. Bless the family and the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, the solid ground. From the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand.
Wow, that was a beautiful song, amen? Just special welcome to the family and the friends here. Don't we love the family right here? I'm just looking out here and thinking about Barbara and uh, just thinking about her just afresh in the last few days and and um, just special love to the family, to Lori and Glenn, Crystal, Paul, Charity, AJ, Kevin and Brian, everyone there. I'm going to miss someone if I start doing that. So I think I probably already have, but, but I was just thinking about Barbara and just thinking about uh, the fragrance of memory and just when, as Pastor just said, we're honoring her life, what she stood for, our friendship, her tenacity, her vigor, her passion, her humor. Uh, she wasn't afraid to be very blunt. Like when I, uh, there were seasons where I couldn't see her as much as I wanted and she let me know that. <laughs> she let me know that. Like, where have you been? <laughs> Felt like I was being in a, in a gracious way, uh, scolded, but I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I need a good scolding, but, but just look at that face. Isn't that a beautiful face? There she is, and she's in glory. No more suffering and no more pain, and we are celebrating the truth of our faith. So let's just pray. I want to share a couple of thoughts with you today. Precious Father, we're thinking of the many that are watching online today, the family. We're thinking of the family and friends present Lord, comfort, but also I pray that you would encourage each one in their faith. Uh, maybe there are those today that uh, are not really thinking about their faith or really thinking about where they are going, but we pray that through this service that you'd be glorified and that they would just uh, connect with you most of all through your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the truth about heaven. We thank you for the truth about this life being in preparation to meet you. So be blessed uh, by these words today. In Christ's name, amen. Just before I get going here, did everyone get one of these? This is a really wonderful uh, bulletin that I'll refer to in a minute. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 through 17, I was thinking about fragrance, fragrance. And when we think about people, words just are not enough, wouldn't you say? where there's a lack of words. Um, when you think about memories, we want to hold on to our memory of, of the ones that we love so we don't lose uh, or have it fade away from our minds and from our hearts. And I was thinking about how is it that we can uh, really hold on to not only the memory of our loved one, but really connect to what they stood for. And Barbara stood for truth, didn't she? She really loved the Lord. Just reading here in the bio that she had a prayer bike. Isn't that amazing? She's on her exercise bike praying for people. I wish I could do that. I'm not praying <laughs> on my exercise bike. I'm just trying to stay on the bike for that matter. But, but really, she had a real heart for people and a tremendous prayer life. But Paul says some, to something interesting about memories here. And, and maybe by way of illustration, you know, when we put on our favorite cologne or perfume, it's intense when you spray it, isn't it? It's really, at first, it's very powerful, very strong, right? And then over time, it dissipates. It maybe fills the room or fills the area that we're in. Uh, maybe you're doing that in the car. It fills the whole car. Everyone knows what's going on. And over time, that fades away, and then maybe you can't smell it after a while. Or if... If it's someone that is in your life and you smell that fragrance often, maybe you become immune to it. You don't smell it anymore, you know. But uh, there's fragrance of memory. There's something that lingers on that we keep with us for the rest of our life. And I think if we were to ask everyone in the room, especially to the Simpkins family, that Barbara had a unique fragrance, didn't she? She had a dynamic uh, aroma that we will carry with us for the rest of our life. And, and that's a beautiful thing to think about. And Paul illustrates it like this. Thanks be to God, 2 Corinthians uh, 2, 14 through 17. Thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And, and really, she was an, another hero we're sending home. She finished strong, weak in the flesh, but strong in the spirit. He causes us 
always to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior, the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. And that word Savior there, that fragrance of his knowledge in every place. When, when you were with Barbara, you knew that you were being loved, you were uh, being heard, and you would eventually hear her about her Savior. There was a fragrance. There was an aroma that, was, that would not be missed. <clears throat> For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Just think about that today as we think about the fragrance of memory. How is it that we can uh, enjoy the aroma or to remember and not have the fragrance fade? Now, there are certainly things we want to forget, right? There are things that when we look at our loved one, we tend to only remember the good times, right? And that's a, that's, a normal, that's a normal thing. We just remember the good times and we remember the, the way that they personally loved us. Uh, but then there are things to forget, right? There are things that are covered and we let go of so that we can remember them in the right way. Well, Paul is saying here that there is every believer has a fragrance. They have a scent to them. And wherever we go, it dispels. It actually is projected from us wherever we go. For those that are believers, it's life unto life. For unbeliever, it's death unto death. You know, uh, and we see this in the life of Christ. Obviously, wherever Christ went, people were glad to see him. And then there were people that weren't so glad to see him. That there were people that heard him gladly, and then there were those that were uh, very angry at what he said. So when we think about our life and we think about the fragrance of life unto life, this is why we're here today. All of us have been touched by Barbara's generosity, by her faith, by her uh, just fighting to the end, not quitting. And that's why that verse up there is so valuable. She can do all things because she knew the Christ that was filling her. And uh, I was thinking, how is it, how can we remember or fellowship or smell that fragrance again? And I think just one thing I'd like to leave with you today is, is we remember what they stood for. That's one way to really remember and to enjoy the fragrance of their life. Because, you know, at the holidays when we smell a certain smell, it triggers in our mind a memory, right? Maybe we're thinking of home. Maybe we're thinking of certain things that bring back fragrance of memories. The same thing with Barbara. Honoring what she stood for is a way to remember her. Amen. Because there's a little piece of her in all of us that her faith, the way uh, her dry humor her, her directness, Th these are very special qualities that we would never want to change. Maybe it took us a little bit to get used to, maybe, I don't know, but, but we love those, those qualities about her. And as a family and as a church family, her aroma, that fragrance is what is life, is sweetness, is life unto life, and that's something we will take with us. And in Romans 14, Paul said this beautiful statement. He said, you know, as believers, we belong to the Lord. If we live, we live unto him. And if we die, we die and go to him, for we belong to him. And as, as a believer, maybe today you're thinking, yeah, I know about heaven. It's, it's more of like a fact in my mind. But when you have a loved one there, it becomes a personal address, doesn't it? becomes a place that one day we will see him face to face. And this is the hope that we have. This is the savor or the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ in every place. Hope has a fragrance. Joy has a fragrance, right? Grace has a fragrance. Mercy has a fragrance. And it's intense at first. And that intensity can be overwhelming, all right, I, I knew someone that really loved to, instead of taking a shower, they'd put on all kinds of cologne and perfume, right? Sorry to be a little humorous here, but you remember that. It triggered, right? It, but you know what? <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, but just to say, 
the fragrance, amen. Think of this, <laughs> John chapter 3. This, this is how our life is. This is how our life is. And this is what's memorable about our life. And Jesus, as he walked and he ministered, healing the sick, as he uh, heard people, listened to where they were at, cared about people, cared about the littlest things. In Acts 2.38, he went around with a spirit of compassion, healing. And I, I just am encouraged to think today that this same God that lives within us gives us the spirit to reach out to others to have that fragrance. And Barbara was like that, wasn't it? She was. And, and I think of Lori, and I think of each one of you. You all have that fragrance of life, of Christ. And when people come into contact with it, it brings a memory. Or maybe they don't know what it means at first, but it brings back memories of maybe what has been said. And our words lead people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's what I just want to close with today, because <clears throat> I know... Uh, this is the most important decision we can make in our life. In John chapter 3, verse 16, John says these words, and they really uh, speak to us today. And we see this was really lived through Barbara's life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, and that's important, isn't it? Didn't, didn't send his son to condemn the world, but through him they may be saved. And then he writes here, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, Barbara came into our ministry 30 plus years ago and celebrated the name of Christ with us for many decades. But maybe today you don't know that precious name. You don't know that aroma that's life unto life. Maybe it's death. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, confusion or maybe it's something that's hard to understand. Well, I know Barbara would want everyone to know that salvation or responding to what Jesus did is a free gift of grace. Think about it. Someone came left everything so that you could have eternal life, to wash away our sin, to give a gateway to heaven. Today, absent from the body, present with the Lord, Barbara, her last breath became the next breath was in heaven. Imagine that. Just think about that for a minute. Our last breath, it's hard to imagine in one sense, but imagine it. And then the next, okay, the exhale, and then the inhale, and then there's Jesus. That's incredible. <laughs> That's heaven. That's, that is what we are longing for. That is the reward of the believer, that, he, that we would respond and say in a simple way, yes, I believe, therefore I am not condemned. Just thinking as I close today, Barbara, entering into glory, hearing those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, she had some challenges physically for the last years in her life, but her spirit was strong. Did you notice that? Very strong. That aroma was intense. That spirit of grace, that life-giving aroma was, was like, you know, God is, God is going to raise you in power, Barbara. God's going to raise you in power. And just thinking of my last visit with her and and uh, just celebrating this fact and just looking at her bio here, she was such a generous and giving lady of God. She, I love this line, her tenacity for the simplicity of life. That's a good word, isn't it? Simple about the important things, not complicated. What is that? That's an aroma of life. That is a beautiful, life-giving uh, exchange. Well, just to close here to say that the best way that we can keep that fragrance, that fragrance of memory, is to honor what she stood for. A prayer warrior. She loved her family. She sacrificed, raised five kids on her own after her husband passed away. Five kids on your own. That's an incredible thought right there. She did not quit. She loved her Bible. She loved her church. She loved her Savior. And these are things we can learn 
and keep that aroma and celebrate her life. Amen. Pray with me, please. Father, we thank you today for this example of life. And today she has eternal life. And my prayer today is if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, you do not have eternal life. And it is a gift of God to simply respond and say, yes, Lord, I believe in Jesus And I receive the free gift of salvation. I receive the gift that Barbara received and was washed clean and made new and was given a heavenly inheritance. So today, if you're doing that today, it's a personal decision, but the most important decision. And don't leave today uh, without thinking about it seriously and responding to Jesus because he loves you and has an amazing Uh, purpose for your life. And Lord, we thank you for Barbara. We thank you for all that she she stood for and all that she uh, so graciously and so clearly showed us. And bless the family today. Bless these testimonies to follow, Lord. And help us to honor and to remember and to be reminded and then to celebrate and to walk in the way that she walked unto Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, right now we're going to have some testimonies, I believe. Start with charity. Um, Firstly, I just want to start by saying that uh, my brother, my sister, and I are so lucky to have had the opportunity to grow up with our grandmother always right down the hall, just a few steps away, and there whenever we needed her. She was truly more than a grandparent. She was a second mom, and she was my friend. And um, she had this incredible ability to really zone in on you when you spoke to her and she was so involved in your life no matter what she had going on what she was dealing with she just wanted to know what you were doing and what was going on and I remember even as a little girl going in her room and sitting on her bed and I would talk to her about everything Um, what I wanted to be when I grew up and school what I was mad about charity or Paul with Um, and she would just stop and listen take a moment to think, and then she would give me a response and give me advice. And if you know my grandmother, you know that she wasn't shy about telling you how she felt or what she really thought. So her advice was always raw and honest and heartfelt. And as I grew up, our conversations matured, and I would have conversations with her um, at our weekly beauty appointments. Um, I would go do her nails and wash her hair in the nursing home and we would talk forever about her day and about work and things that I had going on. And what was amazing to me was that when I would come back or the next time I would talk to her, she would remember everything and she would ask me about details that I didn't even remember telling her. And that was something that was so amazing for me to know that she cared and that she loved me that much and I was that special to her that she knew and she remembered the smallest detail. And it's something I've been thinking a lot about these past couple weeks and really something, a characteristic of hers that I want to emulate, um, just to take the time to listen to the ones that you love and put all the chaos in your own life aside and for that moment really let them know how much you care just by focusing in on those small details Um, The last thing that I wanted to talk about was one of my last moments with her, and we were all, all of us, in her hospital room um, getting ready to say goodbye, and I was holding her hand, and I remembered a conversation that we had had, and in that moment I wanted to remind her about some details that she had shared with me. And so I held her hand and I talked to her about everything she told me that she was looking forward to when she went to heaven. And as I went through each detail about what her castle would look like and all the things that she had to look forward to, 
She tapped my hand and she nodded her head up and down and I knew that she was okay. And I know we're all here to celebrate her life and also to mourn the fact that we don't get to share another day with her here on earth, but we can take comfort in knowing that she's home and she's happy and she's still just as involved in our everyday details of life, um, but now she doesn't have to wait and hear them secondhand. She can see them, she has the perfect view, and she's with us through every moment. I'm Charity. I was the, I'm the oldest grandchild, so I'm the one that grandma would push to get married and give her that great grandbaby, and I was always pushed, so I was really, I felt really blessed that she was able to see me get married, and she had a great relationship with AJ, and she called him her angel. He would spoil her, and she really adored him. He adored her, and she was here to see Riley the last two years that we had her with the dialysis was a gift. She got to see me pregnant. She got to have a relationship with Riley. I have so many pictures of them too, and it was such a joy. I got to see her. I had one last visit with just Riley and I and her, and they just had such a beautiful time. She held Riley and I pushed her wheelchair outside, and she was just so joyous the whole time. And it's just something that I, ha I have this beautiful memory of those two, those two together outside. So that's something I'm gonna hold on to. And just moving forward, I know as my sister, my brother, my cousins who can't be here, Michael and Aaron and Duncan, I know as they all get married and have their kids that she has a front row view, that she's gonna see everything. She's gonna have her hand a little bit and everything. And I just wanted to share one story that really shows her faith. This was a few years when she, ago when she was still living with my mom and my dad. And I think she had pneumonia and she was in the hospital and she was out of it. She was in and out of it and the doctor kept coming in and they have to do like the, you know, they have to see like, what, what do you know? Like they're asking her different questions and Crystal and I were sitting there and we we're trying to hold her hand and be like, Grandma, you have to listen. And she was like, oh, I don't want to. And they're like, what's your name? And she's like, Barbara. And they're like, what day is it? And she's like, I don't know. And they're like, well, do you know the month? And she's like, if I don't know the day, I know the month. So she started getting a little crabby with them and we're like, Grandma, just, just help them. And so they asked her, do you know the president? No, I don't know the president. And they're like, well, what's your religion? And she kind of looked at them. And then she, they, he was like, are you a religious person? And she just sat right up and she was like, no, I'm not a religious person. I'm a born again Christian. <laughs> She's like, I have Jesus in my heart. And she started preaching the gospel to this doctor. So she was definitely full of faith. She loved sharing the gospel with all the people that in her home where she was at, and she was always praying, and she was a very faithful woman. So I just wanted to take this time while we're up here to publicly just thank my, my Auntie Kathy and my Uncle Mark, who are in Massachusetts, because they would send cards and, and gifts, and they would call her all the time, and, and it meant so much to her. As, as soon as we would get there, she would show us it over and over, and she would always talk about it, and it just meant a lot. And to my uncles, Kevin and Ryan, who were there every single day, they were always there, and they're always bringing her things, and they were her babies, and they meant everything to her. And to my dad, who it, nowadays everybody makes fun of the mother-in-law, but my dad just loved her so deeply. He, he really... did so much for her and even when she was on her deathbed he would hold her hand and he was singing to her <laughs> and to my mom I feel like I'm the mom I am today because of you you just loved her so much and you took care of all of us and you took care of her and that love isn't something that's normal that's something that God gave you. And it means a lot to us to see what you did for her and the sacrifices you made and all the decisions you had to make. So thank you guys for, for, for just loving her and we're gonna miss her, but we know where she is and we know she's happy and she has a beautiful glorified body and we're gonna miss her, but we love her. Thank you. Um, 
This time, Diane Termel. Vertigo. <laughs> okay. That was so beautiful. Okay, I think Barbara's listening. <laughs> um, I had such a privilege of um, getting to know Barbara much more in the past few years, and also the family, such a beautiful family. And Kathy and Mark, and it's beautiful. Beautiful servants and loving their grandma and their mom. And um, I just want to say I had a, um, two things on my mind about Barbara. Um, one was um, when I would go and visit her when she was living with Lori and Glenn, I would go upstairs to her room. And every time I was with her, I just felt like I was in the presence of such a godly woman and a like lady. And she was so free with her love and with just like you said, you guys said, she felt, she made you feel like you were the only person. She just zoned in on you and she wanted to talk to you and find out what was going on. And she just wanted to be a part of your life. And that's the way she was with everyone that she met. It was amazing to see that. And the other thing is that at the, um, her, um, she had such contentment in her life with the Lord. And to see her make these major transitions in grace, so much grace that um, it was like, She was just taking a step. Instead of, you know, she was she she left Lori and Glenn's because she couldn't do the stairs anymore. So Brian and Kevin had a beautiful home for her, and there was a like the first floor where she could just, you know, be free there. And you would never have thought she moved. She was just there, total grace. Never said, never ever heard her say a word about, oh, I have to move. I don't want to move. I. You know, I live here, and no, she just took that stuff and never looked back. And then when she went to, um, had to go to um, Cromwell Center, it was the same thing. It was like she just went, and she went in the presence of God, and she went knowing the Lord would be with her. And it was amazing to watch. It was amazing to be a part of that. And she was a blessing to all of the people at the nursing home, at the center, at the Cromwell Center. Um, she had this magnetism about her, and we know it was a life of Christ, because everyone just was drawn to her. And that was, she lived in the spirit of God, and she lived in the love of God. And she was such an awesome friend. And there's many of you out there I know that are friends that you could be up here saying the same thing because she was so precious and so wonderful as a friend. And she will be missed, but the fragrance that um, Pastor Jason was talking about, I was thinking about Jesus when he said, you know, do this in remembrance of me. And I just thought about Barbara, you know, like, what would we do in remembrance of you, Barbara? And that would be to love your family, you know, open your life up to your friends. And, you know, just love people. Let them know how valuable they are. And, and she knew how important community was. She knew how important fellowship was, even in her wheel, you know, wheelchair. I told Lori, I said, you know, your mom's life went way beyond her wheelchair. <laughs> you know, she just, she just knew. She knew in her heart. And she had the fellowship there. You know, she had her body life there. And she shared it with everyone. So thank you. Love you all.
Okay, before the sli slide show, I just wanted to give a shout out to our internet audience. Uh, Uncle Tommy, got, is it really true that um, the camera makes it look like you gained 20 pounds? <laughs> uh, and yes, Mark, you can put away the homemade ice cream now. Okay, uh, um, I just want to share a quick testimony before we do this, this slideshow. And uh, I want to repeat what we heard from the Word of God, the declaration of God through the Word. And what we heard so many times today is uh, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Paul writes that reference in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. And then we, we celebrate today the face-to-face. -face. Um, Paul wrote that also in um, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, verse 12. Paul writes this. He says, though we see dimly now through a mirror, then we see face-to-face. -face. So Barbara is in heaven. She's with Jesus face-to-face. -face. And um, I, I, as I was sitting up here, I noted a couple of friends of mine here today Sensei Mike and Richard Deppendahl looking for a Philly cheesesteak, my man. All right, so uh, I just want to share some testimonies about Barbara. Um, as you heard up here from my daughter, Charity, um, she wasn't like what the world would say, oh, just a mother-in-law that bags you down. No, she to me... She was grandma because I had three precious children in my household and all their lives they had a live-in grandma and the household name was grandma. So to me, she was grandma. And I share with that love, the love of grandma. And uh, such a, you know, such a beautiful lady, uh, such an overcomer. I mean, all her life she battled complications of a heart disease, and she later when she got older, diabetes, all kinds of health complications. But she was a trooper; she fought it through. And that reference, um, I can do all things through Christ. My wife alluded to, even through treatments. I mean, horrendous treatments. I mean, dialysis is four hours long, and she would look to my wife and say. I can do all things through Christ. Uh, you heard the testimony. She raised up five children by herself. I mean, she was an amazing woman. And um, I just want to share a testimony that Pastor Roger Robbins had an outreach in Baltimore here. And my um, mother-in-law, which is beloved grandma, was a part of his outreach team for 15 years. She went door knocking for 15 years. And uh, she uh, took joy in that, you know, serving the Lord, knocking on doors, uh, going to Pastor Rob Rogers' uh, Bible study after and all. And uh, it was great. It was awesome. And then we heard the testimony later how when her health started to deteriorate and she couldn't go out anymore, she still had the heart and the fervor for the Great Commission to reach the lost. And she did, you heard Pastor Jason allude to the exercise bike. The, she called it her prayer bike. And uh, the wheels start turning in my head one day, and I said, she has a heart to reach out. She's on the prayer bike. Hey, Grandma, let's partner up. How about when I go on outreach, when I go out there, you partner with me on that prayer bike and you pray for divine appointments. You pray, you open up heaven. I want to be blessed by God because of your prayers. And just to share a couple quick testimonies, amazing things happen. I mean, just a couple quick ones. One, I was downtown, East Baltimore, Somerset, my outreach area. And um, we saw a, uh, a man in a corner one day and some of my outreach team decided, hey, let's go get this hooked up. Let's get this man the gospel. So they ran over. I'm a little leery because like we're in an area where you don't want to mess with people if they're alone in a corner. 
And uh, they, were, they were jubilant. And they're like, we're going to get this man the gospel. And then they snagged me and go, hey, Glenn, you're going to give this man the gospel. So it turns out this man's name was Herschel. I remembered his name because of the former running back, Herschel Walker. His name was Herschel. And I teased him about being Herschel Walker. I'm giving this man the gospel. He stops me as I'm sharing the glorious good news gospel in the middle of giving the gospel. And I'm like, oh, no, here we go. He's going to backpedal. He's going to exit stage left. What's going on here? He made a profound statement. He looked me eye to eye, and he said, you are the eighth person this week to present to me the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to do the only right thing, and I'm going to ask him into my heart to be my Savior today. And see, that's fruit of Barbara on that prayer bike. Oh, man, amazing times. I mean... That was, that was a precious testimony. I mean, I could name numerous ones. I mean, it's like, when you have someone like that that has a heart for the lost, partners with you in prayer, I mean, the sky's the limit. So I would, I would share these things with her. It'd be phenomenal. But um, I want to share also that in Cromwell last year, like Diane alluded to, she reached out to her community in a nursing home. She's getting dialysis three days a week. That's four hours each segment. It drains you. She's in mobile. She can't walk around. She's, she's fighting a good fight. Well, last Christmas, I had my Christmas greeting card track reprinted up. I gave her a stack. She said, it's not enough. I gave her another stack. You know, she went through the whole community center there, the whole um, hospital area, the Cromwell um, nursing facility, and made sure everyone got the gospel through a Christmas card greeting track. So, Barbara, we love you. And uh, that's just to, to finish out some of the testimonies. And one last thing I would like to say is a tribute to my wife. I mean, I saw her take care of her mom so preciously for so many years. And that's only a true love that can be a agape love from God. I saw it. I witnessed it. So, yeah, praise God. Barbara, you're amazing. Hey, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen.
Okay, um, at this time of the program, I get to close it out with prayer. But before I do that, my wife insisted that I give another gospel invite. And like I mentioned about this guy, Herschel, maybe it's your eighth time. Maybe you're watching on the internet. Maybe it's your eighth time. Maybe today's today. Paul also writes, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, today's the day of salvation. Proverbs 27, verse 1, you can't boast of tomorrow. You don't know what a day will bring. You could die tonight in your sleep. Today's the day of salvation. Now, what I got in my hand here is Grandma's Bible. And I was paging through it the other day. She had some circled Bible verses. And two of them I want to mention to you. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the Great Commission. Go into all the world. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know what the next verse she had circled? Verse 20, Matthew 28. Lo, I go with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Grandma's Bible, Grandma's verse. She had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. She's in heaven today. And even through her turmoil in the last days, she said, I can do all things through Christ. Why? Because she had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible tells us in Acts 4.12, be prepared to meet thy God. If you would die today, are you prepared to meet your God? You'll stand before him face to face, like Barbara is right now, face to face. Are you prepared to meet your God? Right now, we're in that season in, the, in, the, in this time of year, preparation for school, buy school supplies, get ready for school. Life is full of preparations, preparations for a good meal. You got to get the right spices, the right seasonings. You got to be prepared. If you join the armed forces, you have to be prepared. It's called boot camp. They put you through a regiment. They train you. They teach you. Life is full of preparation. Acts 4.12, be prepared to meet thy God. If you would die today, would you be prepared? It reminds me, there's a verse in Matthew 22, verse 12. There was a great marriage supper. The Lord told a par- parable. A great marriage supper. He said, go, go everywhere. Invite good and bad, invite highways and byways, invite everyone to come to this great feast. And in verse 12 in Matthew 22, there was one person who showed up that didn't have the proper attire on. The Lord said, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords said, how come you didn't come with the proper attire? Why aren't you properly dressed? And then you know what the sad thing is? The king of kings, the Lord of lords, had to say this in the parable of the king. Bind him hand and foot. Cast him into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You got to be prepared to meet your God. Now that robe, that garment that the person wasn't wearing speaks of the robe of righteousness. You have to have God's righteousness. You have to be right before God. There's only one way you can be made right before God. See, there's a spiritual law in play here. It's called the law of sin and death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. First of all, all have sinned, all fall short of the glory of God. I'm not a religious hypocrite. I'm a sinner like anyone else. I deserve judgment. I deserve hell like anyone else. The Bible says all have sinned, Romans 6, 23. All fall short. You take it a step further, Revelation 20, 14. Death and hell are cast in a lake of fire. This is the second death. What? The lake of fire. So there's only one way out of hell, one way into heaven, according to this book. I'm going to lift up Barbara's Bible again. According to the word of God, there's only one way out of hell, one way into heaven. And that's by being saved. Acts 4.12 says you must be saved to get to heaven. Be prepared to meet your God. 
Now I'm going to share with you how to get saved. And it's simplistic. I'm going to lift to you the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God eternal. He became a man by way of a supernatural act, a virgin birth. He went to Calvary's cross. He took spike nails, big ones, in his hands, at his feet. A crown of thorns, he became a bloody mess. Now that blood he shed on that cross wasn't anyone's blood. It was God's blood. It was sinless, spotless, and pure to atone and pay for your sins, my sins, the sins of the world. He died. Death couldn't keep our Lord in the tomb. He resurrected the third day. He ascended into heaven. Now here's the good news of the gospel. He did all the work for your salvation on the cross. He was the substitutionary death. He took your place on the cross. He took your hell for you on the cross so you wouldn't have to go there. Now here's the good news of the gospel. All you got to do to get to heaven and not go to hell is accept Jesus Christ personally into your heart. It's a personal relationship. Barbara circled that verse, Matthew 28, verse 20. And lo, I go with you always, even to the end of the earth. Here's your personal invite. Make your RSVP to heaven right now. Accept Jesus like that man Herschel I talked to. Today's the day. Ask Jesus in your heart right now. And you know what? He'll write your name in the Lance Book of Life, Revelation 2015. And you'll go to heaven when you die. But better than that, like Barbara knew, you'll have a personal relationship with the living God in your heart. So bow your heads, close your eyes. Here's a personal invite. Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I thank you for your free gift of eternal life. Come into my heart and live. Amen. All right, and then one last prayer. Um, Father God, we thank you for the life of Barbara Ann Johnson. We thank you for what we heard Pastor Jason share, her sweet fragrance of her life. And we know the secret of that fragrance is Christ in her, Jesus in her. Lord, we ask, Lord, that we would be remembered and reminded from time to time of her portion in her life. And what it means to us. And um, we could receive from that and grow in that and continue to walk. Even when life gets twisted and it gets out of control and out of our control, we can say like Barbara and say, I can do all things through Christ. So, Lord, um, we thank you and praise you for the life of Barbara Johnson. We thank you for all the friends and family that came out to support the Simpkins and Johnson family. We thank you for all those that are watching on the internet. And praise be to God. Amen.